and Dutch, your host for the evening, 1983 Variety Club honoree, truly his brother's keeper, Francis Albert Sinatra. You may be seated. I'm delighted to be here with Dutch and his bride, the First Lady of the United States, and might I add, the First Lady of Geneva, too. Ah. And now, here are some wonderful people who will be entertaining you for the next hour. You've already met Marty, and here are Charlton Heston, Edie Gourmet, and Steve Lawrence, of course, and Emmanuel Lewis, the mightiest little fellow I've ever known in my life, and my buddy, Mr. Dean Mark. I didn't mean to wake you, pal. And that little rascal of devil, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Mr. Vincent Scully, the giant in the baseball world. Mr. Ben Vereen. Hello, Ben. And the Variety Club Orchestra, so lovingly conducted for many years by our dear friend, Nelson Riddle. Tonight, under the direction of Mr. Nick Carrito. Welcome to our all-star party for Dutch Reagan. At affordable prices. The music says it all, ladies and gentlemen. This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Tonight marks a very special celebration for Variety Clubs. We started out by honoring the big Duke, John Wayne, and here we are honoring Duke's pal, Dutch. Tonight we honor the only man from our community who ever wound up living in public housing. <laughs> For tonight's guest, I'm happy to say the rules of the protocol have been relaxed. Tonight, he is Dutch. And if anyone can't handle that, you may call him Mr. Dutch, and that's okay. <laughs> as for Nancy, do as I do. Call her beautiful. <laughs> By the way, Dutch, you got a lot of friends here tonight. Some of the White House press corps who will be served their favorite meal, leek soup. <laughs> insisted upon having that joke instead of for somebody else to read it. <laughs> Dutch did a lot for uh, work in our community. Good work. All in all, he made 53 motion pictures. He started in 1937 with uh, Love is in the Air. He made his last picture, The Killers, in 1964. And in between, there were some great ones. Dark Victory, Brother Rat, King's Row, Hellcats of the Navy with his beloved Nancy, then The Hasty Heart, and my favorite of all times, playing George Gipp, Newt Rockne, All-American. <laughs> and that's here's a Christmas card to you, Nancy and Dutch. Of course, it's not too far off yet, right now. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Troubles will be mild. 
once more Through the years We all will be together If the fates allow Hang a shining star On the highest bow And have yourself a merry little Christmas now Here's a man whose mastery of the English language is second only to Tom Lasorda's. <laughs> Wonderful Vinnie Scully. I cannot tell you the feeling that comes over me standing right here as I am, face to face with one of those chosen few men in history who know from personal experience the glory the frustrations, and yes, the, the sometimes agony that all too often go along as the price of the high office that you sought and to which you were duly elected and re-elected, the president of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> All of us in the sports broadcasting business today feel a special bond for you, Mr. Dutch. After all, you were a member of the club. Indeed you were. You spent five years on radio station WHO in Des Moines, recreating Chicago Cub games. In fact, I remember you told me a cute story about that, oh, a uh, couple of years ago. It was a wonderful story. Now, I would love to tell the story myself but I know it wouldn't be nearly as good. And I just have a feeling that somebody in this room, somebody, might really tell the story the way it should be told. I don't see any volunteers, so uh, it looks like it's down to you and me, Dutch. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> Well, <laughs> could I set the stage for just a second and explain that when you did a baseball game by telegraphic report, that meant you weren't at the ballpark looking at the game. You were sitting at a studio desk with a microphone in front of you and a glass window here and a little slit under it, and there was a fellow on the other side of that window with a telegraph key hearing those dots and dashes, and then he would type and send a slip of paper through to you. And you'd take it, and it would say maybe S1C. Well, you can't sell many Wheaties yelling S1C. <laughs> so you'd say, uh, Dean comes out of the wind-up, here comes the pitch, and it's a call strike breaking over the outside corner to a fellow that boys a ball of a... <laughs> Well, this particular story that I have been dragooned into telling <laughs> happened in a Cubs and Cardinal game, which in the Midwest is really drama. 
It was the ninth inning, the score tied, and Billy Jurgis at the plate. And I saw my friend Curly on the other side of the window start to type. And so I had Dean uh, start his wind up, and I had a ball on the way to the plate, and Curly was shaking his head no. And I thought it must be something sensational that's happened there, and he handed me the slip of paper and the, said, the wire has gone dead. <laughs> well, I had a ball on the way to the plate. And there's only one thing you can do that won't get in the record, so I had Jurgis follow one off down to the left. And then I looked, and Curly just shrugged. And I thought, you know, in those days, you didn't have an announcer for a team for the game. There'd be a half a dozen of us on different stations doing that same game. So I knew that if I suddenly said there's going to be a delay, and we don't know what's going on at Wrigley Field, everybody'd switch to another station. So I took a chance, and I had Jurgis follow one over back at first base. <laughs> and uh, Curly's still sitting slumped there waiting. So then I had him follow one down to the left that just missed being a home run by a foot. Then <laughs> he fouled one back into the stands, and I described the fight the two kids put up that tried to get the ball. <laughs> and this went on until I was beginning to set, if there is such a thing, a world record for a fellow standing at the plate hitting successive foul balls. <laughs> and I knew that I had to keep on. If I now said the wire has gone dead, they'd know that I'd been faking on all of these foul balls. So I had him foul them in a few more directions. I would, in the meantime, I had Dizzy Dean out on the mound to and stepping back and using the rosin bag and shaking off the sign and getting another sign so that it'd take up time. And all of a sudden, Curly sat up straight and started to type. And I thought, here we go. And he's handed me this slip of paper, and I started to giggle. It said, Jurgis popped out on the first ball pitched. <laughs> Here is another first for this evening. Introduce a man who doesn't even know he's here. <laughs> Mr. Dean Martin. Where's Bert? <laughs> Bert. It's, it's a pleasure to be here for your Thank dinner you. tonight. It's the first time. Listen, Ding Dong, we honored him four years ago. <laughs> so I made a mistake. <laughs> and this is for you, Clutch. <laughs> oh, I... Him, you kidding? Ronnie and me... I call him Ronnie, he calls me Deanie. <laughs> but, uh, I just, uh, you know, in 1988, you're going to be out of work, but I'll still be drunk. <laughs> Where's my uh, accompanist? Not only is he my accompanist, but he plays piano for me, too. <laughs> How did you get this out of here? State. It's been great, and a night like this, a few people rage. But I must admit, in all honesty, Mr. Wonderful, that's me. <laughs> There are those I suppose Could get handy if they heard Such bravo But I must repeat in all modesty Mr. Wonderful Still me. <laughs> I drink a toast to him each night, as you might think. Not cause I wish him well, 
but cause I love to drink. <laughs> so will you all in this fine hall raise a glass to the champ of them all. Here's to Dutch and his Nancy too. So wonderful. Variety Club honoree, Mr. Burt Reynolds. Thank you, Frank. Uh, look at that center table, and I, I really wouldn't want your job. I don't think any of us here have to worry about that. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Hi, Dutch. You changed agents, didn't you? <laughs> Dutch and I have a lot in common. For one thing, we both played college football. I played football at Florida State. Dutch played at Eureka. Florida State's going to the Gator Bowl. Did Eureka get a bowl bid? <laughs> and of course, we both made westerns. I made four westerns. Dutch made four westerns. Cowboy from Brooklyn in 1938, Angel from Texas, Santa Fe Trail in 1940, and Cattle Queen of Montana in 1955. Hold it down. Uh, I was going to do a remake of Cattle Queen of Montana, but they wanted me to play the title role. In the early 1950s, Dutch went into television, hosting General Electric Theater and Death Valley Days. He parlayed two television series into a lot better job. I parlayed two terrible television series into another terrible television series. <laughs> he then put in eight years at the branch office in Sacramento before being called to the headquarters back east, where he works today. And I think we should thank God for that. very gifted and talented young men, Emmanuel Lewis and Ben Vereen. Yeah. 
How you doing, Dutch? Just fine. This is great. A guy from Brooklyn calling the president, Dutch. How are you, honey? Fine. This is Reagan. Speaking for all the kids in the world, I want to thank you for doing the all that you've done for us. And to stay away from drugs and get away from drugs so they can grow up with their head on straight. The way kids should. Thank you. Here, here. Well, Dutch, Nancy, rather beautiful. Um, here are some of those kids. They're the International Children's Choir. They're from 50 different nations, and uh, they're here to wish you, as all of us wish to wish you, peace, peace on, on Earth. Earth. God bless you. Thank you all. You know something? Uh, how would you like to take a trip with me to Geneva? <laughs> I think you could do the job. You really could. Thank you. God bless you all. It's a medley of love songs, love songs to America that write the history of this night. And here are the two of the happiest kids in town, Steve and Edie.
days Every hour of life has its own moment of truth. And who better to call it to our attention than the man who parted the Red Sea? <laughs> Chuck Heston. You know, when I uh, got here tonight, I wasn't certain what to expect, except a, a great party, variety clubs, and uh, Francis Albert kind of guarantee that. A party for the president and the first lady on a first name basis. That's. It's a great idea, just like the old days. Actually, back at the Screen Actors Guild, it, uh, it wasn't Dutch, it was Ron, or Ronnie to the old hands. I, I was new on the board then. We were in the middle of a tough strike, and he had appointed me to the negotiating team. I remember coming home very late one night after a long session, 4 a.m., Lydia woke up. Honey, I said, we've got a leader. Yeah. You could say that. That's what I was thinking about when I watched the two of them come into the room tonight. But they walk a road now that we can't possibly know, and they walk it for us. A little less than five years ago, in Washington at the ceremonies marking his first inauguration, I said, tomorrow at high noon, on the steps of the Capitol, one man will take in his hand the most awesome power and influence ever held by a single human being. He will be thenceforth forever wrapped in legend and myth. He will also pick up a burden of responsibility that has no known counterpart in the civilized world. Ronald Reagan will become the lineal descendant of Washington and Adams. Jefferson and Jackson, Lincoln, Wilson, Roosevelt. With them, he will be linked to the very birth date of this republic. And so he has. So he has. So here we are tonight, his friends, we watch him laugh, we see Nancy's foot tap to the music. But we know, sir, you are us. To the world, you are America. Your yes is our yes. Your no is ours. You are every man and woman in this nation. You speak to mankind in our name. You carry the torch that was flamed by Patrick Henry's passion for liberty. Tom Paine's common sense and Tom Jefferson's most uncommon wisdom. Lifted by the memory of those soldiers, known and unknown, whose 
bodies, in your words, lie in the only foreign soil this country occupies. The president. What do we pray for him? What do we wish from him and for him? What can he pledge to us? What can we say to help him? American writers have spoken eloquently to this question. Among them, Thomas Wolfe, William Faulkner, F. Scott Fitzgerald have said, it's a fabulous country. The only fabulous country where miracles can happen all the time. I refuse to accept the end of man. He will prevail because alone among all creatures, he has a soul, a spirit capable of compassion and endurance and sacrifice. In this country, there is a willingness of the heart. And as you lead us into the uncertain, beleaguered future in the broad swell of continent between those shining seas, let me say for all of us, Mr. President, in the words of a song you'll remember, God shed his grace on thee. Today, Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce the International Chairman of Variety Clubs International, Mr. Monty Hall. Stay with me because you're going to be part of this. Okay. Dutch. Gee, I feel funny saying Dutch. I Pretty strange, I must say. By allowing Variety Clubs International to televise this wonderful party in your honor, you join our Humanitarian Hall of Fame. In earlier parties like this, we have added new facilities to our children's hospitals dedicated to John Wayne here in our Miami Children's Hospital, Elizabeth Taylor in New York's Flower Fifth Avenue Hospital, Jimmy Stewart in our Minnesota Variety Heart Hospital, Ingrid Bergman in our Des Moines Blank Memorial Hospital, Jack Lemon in our Buffalo Children's Hospital, Burt Reynolds in this the Eggleston Hospital for Children in Atlanta, Carol Burnett here in the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, the Sinatra Family Wing for the Chronically Ill, and this the Seattle Children's Orthopedic Hospital and Medical Center. And last year, the Lucille Ball Diabetes Research Library here in the Barbara Davis Juvenile Diabetes Hospital in Denver. I hasten to remind you that all of these hospital units are dedicated to the care of sick and underprivileged and handicapped children without regard to race, religion, or the family's ability to pay. Now, uh, before we announce tonight's dedication, let's make our guest, former Eureka College football hero, feel at home. <laughs> Here is the fight song of the Red Devils, Oski Wow Wow. Oski Wow Wow? Oski Wow Wow, Oski Wow Wow, fight for Eureka. your old alma mater song, Neath the Elms, Would You Join Us Dutch? <laughs> You've been a friend of Variety Clubs for many, many years now. You participated in early parties like this by sending your greetings and Nancy's to our honorees. And I'm sure that Nancy has told you of her work as honorary chairperson of Variety Lifeline, which provides surgery for children with life-threatening problems around the world. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Thank you, Nancy. And now to you, sir, Ronald Wilson Reagan, 
Born and raised in Midwestern America, the heartland of our nation. Tonight you return to Midwestern America, if not in body, certainly in spirit. We are proud to announce the Ronald Reagan Wing, which will be dedicated in your honor right here in the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you our friend, Dutch. Well, <laughs> it's good to be Dutch again. And it's wonderful to be surrounded by so many fine and talented friends. To paraphrase Jack Kennedy, there hasn't been so much talent assembled in one room since, well, since the last time that Monty Hall hosted Let's Make a Deal. <laughs> Seriously, Nancy and I have watched these parties over the years, and we're thrilled to be a part of the good work of the Variety Clubs International. And something Lucy said last year applies to the way that I feel right now. Let's see if I can quote her accurately. To those of you who said such nice things about me tonight, I just wish you were all under oath. <laughs> I... I wish you were all members of Congress. <laughs> you know, when I first started in my present job, I'd sometimes put together in my mind my own dream cabinet. You know, John Wayne as Secretary of State, Clint Eastwood at Defense, Jack Benny as Secretary of Treasury, Groucho Marx at education. <laughs> but even presidents can't have everything. Except tonight, tonight all of you here, well, you've really made my day. <laughs> and as for all of you who are so generous in sharing your talents with us tonight, will you please stand up so that I can applaud you all once more? Come on. Those of you... Thank you. And Frank, old blue eyes, as always, you've been the perfect host. And voice rings just as pure and clear as ever for all of us guys and dolls who are still young at heart. Speaking of music, Steve and Edie, I like the songs you sang, not a clinker in the bunch. And Dean Martin, <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> Dean, I'm thrilled that you were able to be here tonight for Burt Reynolds' party. <laughs> and sometime, if they ever have a party for Nancy and me, I hope you can make that one, too. <laughs> and Vin Scully, you brought back a lot of happy memories. And Monty Hall, the voice of Variety Clubs, thank you for your presentation. And Mike Frankovich, you share those words of gratitude. Everybody knows how devoted you are to variety. And Ben Vereen, you've danced your way into America's heart. And Emmanuel Lewis, we should never lose sight of what you said. Wait a minute. Even if sometimes we lose sight of you. Ah. <laughs> well, there you are, Manny. Right. And that was a lovely sentiment that was expressed by the International Children's Choir. And Chuck Heston, I, I knew you had leadership qualities when I saw you play Moses. <laughs> you were eloquent and gracious in your remarks about the that guard on the Eureka Varsity. Thank you. To all of you associated with the good work of variety, you have our eternal gratitude for arranging this party, for all the good work that you've done in your half a century of giving and caring for those who need our help the most, the innocent children of the world. <laughs> Having my name associated with your good work, the University of Nebraska Medical Center, 
will always have a special place in my heart. And I thank you all very much. And, and now, speaking for Nancy as well as myself, to all of you here and to all Americans everywhere, paraphrasing something that Moses said earlier, God shed his grace on each of thee. Thank you. As you leave the step once more into history, you go with our prayers and a song, a song that says it all. May we have a bell tone, please? Should old acquaintance be forgotten and never brought to mind? Should Assistance furnished by Pan American World Airways. This is Forrest Sawyer. Emma Jean Coker talks about her role in Alice in Wonderland, and you'll meet college football's Heisman Trophy winner tomorrow on the CBS Morning News. Now stay tuned, his favorite stars dare to become circus performers. Join special guest star Burt Lancaster and ringmaster Dick Clark, B. Arthur, Lucy Arnaz and Merv Griffin on the 10th annual Circus of the Stars next.